Hey, welcome in 2022. Uh, I hope it's been good so far. Uh, I'm quite excited for today's video, if I might be honest. Uh, I think it's important one. At least I wish I saw it when I was a junior designer. Do you know what all of those projects have in common? Text, a message, typography. I, I cannot find any project in the past that uh, I've designed and didn't have any typographic elements. So I've been, I've been doing design for, I think, nine years now. Jesus, I am old. And one thing that I can spot right away when I'm uh, looking at someone's work is uh, how they work with typography. And the details uh, of typography differentiate a junior designer from more experienced designer. If you are a designer and you are trying to improve your design skills, this is actually one thing that every designer has to improve to get better. So in this video, I will share how to work with typography. I will share some small tips and tricks uh, that you can apply on your design right away. I promise you that it's worth it and it's gonna improve your skills right away. And in the end, I will also share some links with you if you want to dig into more to that topic or if you want to be more updated with trends. First thing that you can do to improve your typographic skills is to analyze. What I mean by that is uh, find a project that you really like and take a look at its typography. I have a thing that I always do since I discovered that it's possible when I am on the website that I really like. Let's, uh, let's open something here. So I'm on the website that I like the typography. Now uh, what, what I see here is that just things works together. Let's say that I don't know why. Um, I would like to know what fonts they are using and how they work with it. There is this extension to Chrome uh, called Type Ninja. When you click here, you can see uh, what kind of fonts they are using. So you can see that they use two. If I hover on, uh, on any text, I can see here uh, some information. I can see that uh, they use here font size 16 with line spacing of 16 uh, pixels. This is, you can see here on those numbers and that the letter spacing is uh, set to zero. Or I can also see what kind of color of text they use. They use 71 pixels for headers and uh, 79 uh, line spacing. You don't have to know anything about that yet. But the only thing that I want you to notice is, okay, I like this. There is uh, this thing that has 16 pixels and this is 71. Huh, it's a nice combination. And that's for now enough for you to, you know, uh, memorize a bit. Okay, maybe those numbers, if, uh, <laughs> if Dropbox designs using, maybe those numbers are uh, not bad together. So I just want you to go to websites that you like and explore those and try to maybe replicate them in your designs to see how those things work. Uh, and I will talk about scale more, so bear with me. So what I want you to do here is try to think. Why do they use this size for header? Why do they use this size for body? And how many typefaces are they uh, using together and why and I know that it might be overwhelming in the beginning but trust me more you watch more you look uh, then more you will start to notice those small things so those small details and after a while you won't have to really check everything you can just feel it As I mentioned in the beginning that I can spot uh, right away the difference between junior and more experienced designer if it comes to typography. And here is why. The details really, really matter. And if you know about them, then you cannot unsee it. So hopefully after this, you will just see those things and apply it in your designs. Now we are looking at my Figma, but you can do it in any uh, design tool, in Photoshop, in InDesign or XD or any design that you really use, doesn't matter. I created a 
uh, paragraph of text. Uh, the difference between typeface and font, that's the header. Then you have some sub-information about who written this text uh, and when. And then some paragraph, two paragraphs of text. If you look here, I use, uh, that's what happens in, in uh, Figma when you just write something by default is Roboto. So for text, I, I set just 32 size of the font and everything else is automatic, right? So you have some spacing here in, in this is 40 as in Dropbox example, 16 pixels for this uh, small uh, information and for paragraph and everything else is on auto. That might be it for you, right? When you are designing. But uh, let me show you things that I do when I work with text. Okay, so first what I do, I just change the typeface because I don't like to go with this default one. Well, I went a bit uh, boring. I use uh, Helvetica Neue and I just wanted to show you something that is uh, quite often used and, uh, and it's nicely made font. I mean, like, that's why it's so popular, right? Uh, so I didn't change anything else. I just, uh, first phase, I just changed the typeface, okay? Now, next thing. I decided that I want to differentiate this text a bit more. Uh, so I changed header to medium uh, weight and I changed the size to 37 uh, pixels. I didn't change yet anything else here. Uh, I made this sub information slightly uh, smaller because I think it's less important than the body text. And then with uh, body text, I kept it 16 because this is nice base. Okay, here I started to change uh, a bit more details of everything. We treat differently paragraphs and headers. And for headers, since headers are bigger, I change the letter spacing to minus 2%. And you can see how it affects the text. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, so that's the default. And I just made it slightly uh, closer together so our eyes can read it um, better. And I increased the line height to 110%. You can see this often in headers uh, that people put this number. And I would suggest in the beginning to start with that. Of course, there are different options that you can write here when you experiment more with type. But in the beginning, stick to something simple. Then for this small information text, caption text, I change it to 12 pixels, as I uh, say before, and just uh, increase the line height to 130%, and I kept the letter spacing the same. And here in body text, and this is important because this is text that you very often gonna have, 130% of line height and a bit of letter spacing on negative side to make it a bit more condensed. And you can see here that it's really, really makes a difference. I think this is a sweet spot to make it nicely readable. And this makes uh, our eyes feel more relaxed. It's not too far, not too close. It's, it's a nice rhythm. So maybe I will also zoom out a bit so you can see. Here I change the spacing between those sections. So I brought this caption a bit closer to the uh, header, so 16 pixels, and also here the paragraph. So you can see that it works together, that it's related, right? And the last thing that I did here, and I think this is something that a lot of designers forget, is that I change here uh, the paragraph spacing to 12. Many of designers just uh, keep it default, like you don't know, you know, do the enter and you think that uh, that this is okay. But I like to have control over my paragraphs. I think this is better because it's more close together. It still makes this difference uh, that there is a I mean, next paragraph. It, it still marks it, but I think it's nice to have control over it. So don't forget that there is this option uh, to change it. Next thing that really not many people change is color. So for light background, I use white color that has a bit of different shade to make it not so bright because when it's so bright like this you know default white 
I think the, the contrast is too high and, and your eyes are getting really tired. And for header, I made it uh, black, but a bit more towards the gray part. Also the same, to, to make this contrast contrasty enough, but uh, less harsh to the eye. And I chose to change also color for body text to a bit more towards gray. And you don't have to do it, you can keep it a header, but in my opinion, sometimes it makes this hierarchy between things more visible. So you can do it with different colors. Here it's more towards a blue, but important part is here. When you are changing colors, just make sure that the contrast between background and text is enough. And how I like to tackle this, how I like to check if my contrast is good, I have a plugin for Figma called Stark and I check the contrast here. I select the background and the text and it tells me what is the ratio between those colors and if the contrast is enough in different sizes. And this is very important, just remember to make your design accessible. Not everyone see the way that you do, so make sure that you think about those people. Here I have an example where maybe you can read this, but as you see, when you check the contrast, it's not enough. So keep it in mind, it's good to test always, even if you think almost 100% that it is correct, it's always better to check. So what I would like you to do now is to look at your old designs and try to apply those changes that you just learned about and tell me in the comments if it made a difference or maybe you know already about all of this, you are like an expert. Some people know those things just by looking, but for me it wasn't obvious when I was uh, more unexperienced than I am now and um, I hope that it will help you as well. Okay, next one. Less is more. It uh, sounds cliche, but it's really true. Many designers uh, that I know, that I, and I think I was the same when I started, I thought that more different typefaces, different ways I, I throw into design, then more it's gonna be creative and more it would stand out. But actually uh, it's quite opposite and we like to complicate our life, I think, too much. I think that as a junior designer or someone who is not super experienced with type, you can just stick to one typeface and maybe select two to three weights and just try to work with that. So if you want to differentiate your text, make sure to apply those things that you just learned. So you can change colors, you can change its size, you can change line height, you can change uh, spacing between letters and that will be enough to make a car key more visible for the user. Okay, so now you learn those things and maybe you wonder, okay, but how I can choose what size can I use in my website? So looking at this website that we just saw earlier, how do you think they achieve this nice balanced design? Because for me, this is balanced. I can really see uh, the difference between headers, between subheaders. I know what what is important in this text and like I can easily scan it with my eyes and everything is simple. So depending on your project, you might want to choose a few things like header, subheader, body text, caption text, and might be enough. But uh, if you want more and you want to understand what sizes work together, you can use different websites. And one of them is modular scale that I use. So this website does one thing you can choose different scales, which basically are just mathematical scales that calculate different sizes that work together. So uh, if you go to the list first, this is a scale that is very like linear, I would say. So there is a two pixel, one pixel difference uh, between those. And I think I wouldn't recommend to use this, but if you look, for example, on perfect fourth, I think this is a nice scale to use. So body text 16, uh, 12 pixels of some caption. Then you can have a header of 28 or 21 and bigger headers. 
let's see how we can apply it in our designs. Here you can see I used major second first scale, header 28, caption 14 and body 16. Here is perfect fourth 37 header, caption 12 and 16 body. And I really like this one, 72 header, very small, I think actually too small, uh, caption 9 and body 18. I wanted to show you how big difference it makes in design to change those parameters. It's really, you don't have to use 10 different font weight to achieve it. In this example, we are using one weight. It's all irregular. We could use medium or even bold if you want to make it even more stand out. But because we increase the size so much, we can really see the difference here and we don't have to change it. This is really big header, 72 pixels. I increased line height 105% because it's quite big and letter spacing negative 3%. So you can really see how it works. You can try an experiment. Uh, not every scale will, will work with all the designs. So think about uh, what your design represents, um, what you want to achieve with it. Do you want this design to be more standout design or is it something that you just want it to be easy to read and not really scream with uh, typography? So it's up to you how you uh, decide to uh, use this tool and pick different scale. But now you know how to do it and you can play around with it. And by the way, I will drop in the description uh, some articles that you can read about a type scale to be more nerdy. Uh, so make sure to check it out. I think it's very interesting. Another very important thing is column width. Here you can see two examples of things that we just uh, designed. Let's see what happens when I make it quite wide. Can you read it? There is a rule in design that in one line we should fit 8 to 10 words to make it readable. And it is quite simple to understand why. Because the journey that your eye has to take from here to the beginning of this uh, next line is quite long. And it's quite easy to uh, get a bit overwhelmed with it uh, when you are reading, even if the text is a bit bigger. Let's fix it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think this is this is fine. You can make it a bit wider or a bit shorter. I think this is this is good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can do it like this. And also, it goes from other side, right? If you do it more condensed. I mean, you can decide yourself if that's the approach that you want. Try to read it yourself. In the beginning, you probably will have to count the number of uh, words. And of course, take into consideration that some words, some languages have different length of words. So keep it in mind. I think in the beginning you will count, but later on you will just see those things. And because you just watched this video, you probably will remember it, hopefully, and you can apply it in your designs. By the way, we are almost there. I need to drink a bit of water because I cannot think anymore. Okay, now let's talk about alignment. The rule is simple. Try to align to left or sometimes to the center. And that's, that's it. Uh, I will show you why. Here you have example of body text align to the left and align to the center. Like when you're reading this, think about what is easier for you to read. And the answer is uh, simple. I hope it's the same. I mean, it would be weird if you said that the right one. Well, simply it's easier to read the text uh, align to left because it starts from the same point. And here your eye will have to scan and it just takes longer time. So remember longer text, body text, align to left and when to align to center. When you have short headers, you can do it and sometimes it works. You can also align them to left uh, to keep it more simple. When to align to right, well, maybe if you have some caption or some description under the photo, you can do this. You don't have to, you can align to left 
Should you justify text in no in digital? It's hard because the websites are responsive. That means that they have to work in different sizes of the screens and then you don't have control how the text breaks. And then you can end up with nasty gaps and we don't want that. So stick to the left or to the center uh, if it's something shorter. Simple, right? We are uh, heading to the end and there is one more tip that I actually didn't think that much till recently, till like a few years back, which is lorem ipsum. Uh, we tend to use lorem ipsum as designers a lot and it's because we are lazy. I understand, I'm very lazy. You probably noticed that I didn't use lorem ipsum and it's because it's actually very hard to uh, see yourself if the text is readable by reading something that you don't understand. And look at that, uh, what I mean. So here you have different examples. It's exactly the same settings, but different language. So here you have English and Polish, and here you have lorem ipsum. So I understand English and Polish. So for me here, I can easily grasp which text is readable and if it makes sense. But with lorem ipsum, I'm not sure. I don't know how it works, but I'm just not sure if it's good. Maybe in body copy I can say, ah, probably it's okay, but with headers it's tricky. And speaking about languages, every language is different. Uh, for example, Polish can have quite similar length of words like English, so this is not a problem for me. But if I would design for something German, then I would really have to think because German words are quite long. Have you ever tried to write a date in, in German? Yeah, and, and then fit it in a header. Uh, just keep those things in mind when you are designing. It's all about thinking before you design. I hope you won't use lorem ipsum anymore and you will try to think about the text that can fit. Like you can even see here that this header doesn't look so nice. But I think in Polish and in English it looks quite okay. And the last tip, uh, which is theoretically small one but it's actually a big one. Never stop learning. I think that I just touch the, do you say, touch the tip of an iceberg, wherever, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's just like a small part of what you can learn about typography. I mean, there are so many things and I'm also not an expert in the field. I mean, I'm not like designer of, of fonts. To make sure that you are updated with trends and that you understand a bit more Follow people who, who know this the best, you know? Follow type designers, follow type foundries and other accounts on social media that talks about typography. And I will just share quickly uh, with you some places that I personally follow and they really help me a lot. Uh, so let's just quickly jump into that. Typewolf. It's a website that is super, super helpful when you are in the beginning of the project and you want to choose which fonts to pair together or simply you want to see how other people use it. So let's say that hmm, you like this typeface. You can see here which websites are using this uh, font. Super cool, you can open them. So let's open one of them. You can see how it looks. I love it, so cool. And then you can see what fonts were used together. Remember my tip, you can just, you know, use Type Ninja, check what they use for different headers, how they use it, and so on. So that's one of the things that you can do on TypeWolf, but not only. You can see what fonts are similar. There is this trend in web design that everyone uses the same font. So this is the easy way to change it a bit for yourself. You can go here and change this to similar fonts. So at least you are not using the same one. There are also very important uh, learning uh, resources that you should definitely look into if you are interested in learning more about the topic. Something that I use quite a lot to just get inspired or just see how you don't have a font and you don't know if you want to use it or not, if you want to buy it or not. Uh, you can basically 
let's use the same one, Helvetica Neue. In which projects people were using it, how it works, how you can work with font, because there are so many ways, sometimes you can be more creative, uh, how you can pair them as well. Very good resource of knowledge. Really type very very nice swiss type foundry and what is really nice about their uh, instagram that they have this uh, gt academy where they explain things about fonts and this is super cool and i'm always always mind blown how great they are and how great they explain things so if you would like to one day design your own uh, typeface then you can come here and and uh, learn with them I mean, how cool is that, really? Like, learning from people who know the best. Really, really nice. I uh, highly recommend, follow them. Contemporary type, an account on Instagram that has some nice cutting edge typography from Earth, <laughs> quote, quote. It, they have really nice examples, sometimes more artistic approach and it's i found it very inspiring sometimes i can find some uh, fonts that i haven't seen before uh, really helpful and the list of type foundries that i follow and i love here we go pangram pangram blaze type abc dynamo family type typefaces pizza or pizza typefaces Monkey type Klim Och no type Open Foundry Those fonts are uh, for free, you can use it in any project play around with them. Many of the foundries that I just uh, told you about have option to get free trial fonts which basically means that you can use it in your Figma or wherever you work and play around with that and see how really great typeface can change your project. I hope you learned something new today. Uh, if you did, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you would like to learn more. I am very new on YouTube, I still learn. Uh, so any feedback in the comments, very much needed and appreciated. It takes me so much time to produce those videos. I think it took me 40 minutes today to just put the lamps up. It will take me uh, maybe eight hours to edit and to record, it was probably one hour. So it takes a bit of time and I'm not paid for that. I do it in my free time. So if you could like it and subscribe and write something nice in comments, I would really feel uh, very happy. It motivates me. So please, uh, please just like me. Ah, by the way, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I am quite active there and since I am not super frequent on YouTube, I mean, I do it as often as I can, but I have, uh, you know, full time stuff to do. So, so I don't uh, post so frequently, but I always let you know on Instagram and I post quite often on stories. Follow me and if you have something to say, you can send me direct message there. I guess that's it. Yeah, uh, I hope you are motivated to learn something new and that you learned something new already. I hope you have a good day and see you later.